Hi there, this is Mr. Bainey, and this lesson is 5.3, Interpreting Rate of Change and Slope. The essential question, how can you relate rate of change and slope in linear relationships? Uh, so this is the last lesson of Module 5. And the first two lessons, if you recall, we looked at what makes up a linear function and a linear equation. How do we graph them? How do we deal with domain and range in those? And in the second lesson, we looked at how do we find x and y intercepts, how does that relate to the linear equation, and how can we interpret those when we're in a context, in a situation. Um, in this one, we're going to be dealing with the slope of the linear equation, also called the rate of change, and how do we interpret that when we're in a context. Uh, so. You'll see the first vocab term that they give us here is rate of change. The rate of change is how much is something changing, right? We're dealing with X and Y. And so uh, this, when I talk about rate of change or when I talk about slope, I am talking about the same exact thing. I use those interchangeably. So again, when I say rate of change, I also mean the slope or vice versa. So. This explore activity, I'm not actually going to go through it, but I would suggest you, I might actually just do the first part just to kind of get you started, but I would suggest kind of going through it to see if uh, you understand all the different parts of um, working with the rate of change in a word problem. Uh, and, and hopefully that makes sense to you. So rate of change is how much does the Y change divided by how much the X changes. So it's the ratio between the changes in Y and the changes in X. And so if you're looking at this table of values right below, we're looking at uh, our Y value is the, is the cost in cents. And then the X value is the years, right? So we're going to look at how much does it change from the first one to the second one. And you're going to take that and divide it by how much it changes in the X. Okay. And when you do that for every pair, you're going to get the rate of change in the slope. And when those all, all those numbers, if they are the same, that's what makes up a linear equation. So it is not linear if we're getting different rates of change between points, okay, if that makes sense. Uh, so if we look at the um, part, you know, A, B, and C at the bottom, I'll just start you off with part A. From 2003 to 2004, we have a cost goes, um, 2004 was 37 cents, and then 2003 was also 37 cents. Right, and then four minus three at the bottom. That's our change in x. So the t uh, the top part is the change in y. It changes from, or actually, it doesn't change, but it's thirty seven in one year, thirty seven in the next year. So the change is zero on the top. The years it changes by one year for the x value. So that's zero over one, which is zero. And then um, from four years to six years, I'm sorry, from 2004 to 2006, the Y value does change. It's actually gonna end up being one cent per year. And already just by looking at part A and part B, this situation is not linear, right? Linear is, we like linear because it it's very predictable. We know how much is gonna be added every single year, right? Or every single X, increase in x value okay so i'll give you that chance to uh, try to go through the rest of this there's also more on the second page that you can give a try on page 223 it starts to talk about slope the concept of slope on a linear equation when we're looking at a graph and slope is the rise over run this is one way to think about and describe slope. They also define what rise and run mean. So hopefully it makes sense to you that rise is 
rise has to do with the y value and then run has to do with the x value so the top part is how far is it going up or down and the bottom part of the fraction is how far is it going left and right for the your turn number seven and number eight let's go ahead and do both of these and uh, feel free to try any of these before you see my answers, if you like. Um, number seven, here's one way to do slope. Okay, so don't think that you have to do it this specific way. Um, so if I start at one point, I'm gonna start at this point here at the bottom. They give us, they, they label two points, but remember, think about this. A line consists of an infinite amount of points. I can choose other points if I want to. It's just that they've labeled two for us already. So I'm going to start at one of the points they've labeled. And I want to figure out how do I get to the other point? How do I get to this blue one? So I'm going to do a rise. If I start from the red one, I'm going to rise this much. And then I'm going to run or go across this much. And I need to figure out how much I rose and how much I ran. So I rose five. I'm sorry, it's not five, it's six. Because think about it, I went from negative three all the way up to positive three. So that's a rise of six. And then I ran from zero to five. So I ran five to the right. Okay, direction is also super important because if I started on that left point, I went up six, which is a positive, and I went right five, which is a positive. So my um, slope here is six over five. If I started at the blue point and went to the red point, I would end up getting negative six over negative five, which still reduces to, it's still equivalent to positive six over five. Okay, number eight. Let's start at the left point, the, sorry, the top point. I like to start the one that's more to the left. That's just a preference of mine. You can start at any one you want to remember. So I'm gonna do a, a rise, which means I'm going down. And then I'm gonna go over to the right. A very, very small run. So my rise, I went from two, remember the rise affects our Y value. I went from two to negative three and I went down. And because I went down, that's gonna be represented by a negative five. I went down five. And then for the run, I went from negative three to negative two. So I went over one. And that's gonna give us a slope of negative five, okay? If you put negative five over one, that's actually fine. Um, but it is equivalent to just negative five. That's what you'll see. The, uh, the book answers, label it as just negative five. Right below this your turn is a formula they're gonna, they're gonna give us so that you don't have to do the graph. Although the graph I feel like is more convenient, the formula is gonna help us for when we don't have a graph or if you prefer not to use it. So the slope formula is right here, m equals this whole thing right here. So the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So it's important to note, there's a lot of variables here. M is slope. That's the first thing you need to know. So I don't know why they used the, the, the letter M. Um, there's a, there's a, few, a few ideas as to why M was used, um, but I'm not sure. It may not even have to do with the English language. Uh, so anyways, we start with the point x1 and y1. So we have a point here and we have a second point. To find slope, we need to have two points. If you remember from the your turns, I had to go from one point to the other by doing rise and run. So we need two points and that's how we would calculate it. So let's try a couple of those. Number nine, we're gonna find the slope of each line passing through the given points using the formula. 
And then we're going to describe the slope as positive, negative, zero, or undefined. Um, so number nine. Remember that on this graph, we could do rise over run by drawing on the graph and then and then uh, figuring out our slope there. But we're going to use the formula. So our formula is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And I could take my points, like uh, the negative 1, 9. I could call that x1 and y1. Then I'm going to call my second point x2 and y2, right? That's my second point. Um, and so this just becomes like a substitution type of problem where I figure out, okay, what's y2? That's negative 5. What's y1? It's 9, right? Negative, negative 5 minus 9. And then x2 is 2 minus x1, which is negative 1. So a lot of the mistakes are going to happen when we're dealing with negatives. It's always subtracting. So you're going to subtract whatever that coordinate is. So we're subtracting negative 1 on the bottom. And we're going to get, it uh, looks like, negative 14 over positive 3. And you could verify that negative 14 means if I start at my... Um, First point, my x1, y1, I'm going to go down 14. And then the 3 on the bottom means I'm going to go do a run of, of 3. So the rise is negative 14 and the run is 3. I can't reduce that. Um, do not write these as mixed numbers because it I think it complicates things when we're thinking about rise and run. So leave it as negative 14 over 3. And that is it. Go ahead and pause the video and try number 10. It doesn't give you a graph here, so this will be a good practice for using the formula. Okay, to find slope for number 10, we're going to do y2 minus y1. You don't always have to write this formula. I'm just writing it because uh, it'll help us plug directly into it when I'm referring to the, the different variables that we're using. So. Um, this first point is the point 1 comma 5. So I'm going to write it in this way. You don't have to do this. There's just a different way to uh, look at it. And then this red one right here, the second point, is the point 2 comma 5. So I'm going to call the first point x1, y1, and the second point x2 and y2. So then when I'm using my formula, y2 is 5, y1 is 5, x2 is 2, and x1 is 1. Remember that I'm just looking at the values I've assigned here, right? x1, y1, and x2, y2. And when I work this out, I get 0 on the top and 1 on the bottom. So 0 divided by 1 is 0. And one thing I forgot to mention in the, uh, the directions, what it told us to do is to describe the slope as positive, negative, zero, or undefined. The uh, number nine is a negative slope. Okay, think about how lines with negative slopes look. And the uh, number 10 is a zero slope. Okay, because of the rate of change or our slope be calculated to zero. And think about what this would look like. If I were to actually graph it, and you can actually graph it on um, this graph just right here for number nine. And what does this line look like? And every line that looks like that is going to have a zero slope. Okay, that's an important feature that you're going to see. Okay, let's take a look at our last type of example. And that's when we have a real life situation. We're going to interpret slope. Okay, going looking at A and B, uh, trying out B is gonna is gonna give you um, some more practice. If you'd like, I'm gonna skip that for now. And let's do the your turn. I'll do number eleven, and you, after I do that, you can go ahead and pause it before you see number twelve. 
So we're going to find and interpret the slope for each of these. Number 11. Uh, this graph shows the relationship between the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit and the uh, temperature in degrees Celsius. So the slope is, I'm just going to actually do rise and run on the graph. I could use the formula if I wanted. It's going to give me the same solution. Okay. So the uh, rise is, I went from 10, right? I can also look on the right side over here. I went from 10 to 25. So that is a rise of 15. I went up 15. The run, I went from 50 all the way to 77. And that means it is a run of 27. Okay. When you use the slope formula for this, you're also going to get 15 over 27. We can actually reduce this. And uh, if we divided the top and the bottom by, let's see, three, we're gonna get five over nine. So what does this mean? There's a couple ways that we can interpret this. So the rise represents the temperature in degrees Celsius. The run represents, or the x, the x values represent the degrees Fahrenheit. So we could say something like this. Um, an increase in nine degrees Fahrenheit Right, nine, the nine has to do with the X or our run. An increase, I shouldn't say is, I should have said in. An increase in nine degrees Fahrenheit results in an increase in five degrees Celsius. Or you could say, that um, the degrees Celsius, so temperature increases five ninths degrees Celsius for every one degree Fahrenheit increase. Okay, so if I go up one degree Fahrenheit, it goes up five ninths degrees Celsius. That's about 0.56. Um, and so the second one is um, helping us look at it as a unit rate because we're only going up by ones for our X value for our inputs, which is going to help in a lot of our problems. So you do you definitely want to understand it in the second way. But when we're dealing with fractions, it's, it is difficult. And so another way to deal with fractions is to kind of deal with it in this way. Nine degrees Fahrenheit means a change in five degrees Celsius. They're both going up, okay? Number 12, again, pause it so you can give it a try. The number of cubic feet of water, Y, in a reservoir X hours after the water starts flowing into the reservoir is a linear function. Um, they give us the points that are on the line. So the slope, first it's called the, the first uh, 40 comma 3000, x1 and y1, because it's a x comma y. And then the second one is x2 and y2. So the slope, I'm not going to write the formula down this time, is um, x2 minus x1 is this over... 60 minus 40, so I get 1,000 over 20. And let's see how many times this go in. It goes in, it looks like 50 times. So you could think of it, let me erase it actually. You can think of this as 50 over one or just 50. For some of you, the 50 over one is, is gonna be better to look at because 50 over 1 shows what your rise is and what your run is. 
Okay, so I'm fine if you leave it as the 50 over 1. Now to interpret this, there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, but one way is um, the, let's see, it flows into the reservoir. So you can say uh, the reservoir The reservoir is going to fill up, right? Reservoir fills up 50 cubic feet of water each hour. Or you can say for every one hour, right? That's what... The 50 over 1 means 50 cubic feet, and the 1 is the number of hours. Okay, Because you because you can think of, before I reduced it, the 1,000 over 20 is 1,000 cubic feet in 20 hours. And so we divide that to figure out how much it fills up in one hour. And this is, remember, our rate of change or the slope. Uh, that's it for the lesson. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.